We have one final display for quantitative data, and that's a box plot. Box plots just give us a way to represent our five number summary, um, and they're really useful, especially when we want to compare multiple groups. Um, if we want to do comparisons when we're talking about a histogram or a stem plot or a dot plot, uh, the best we can really do is doing a back to back stem plot or a back to back histogram. And those are fairly rare. You usually won't see those very often in literature. So, what we end up doing is this box plot. So, you can see here in this first example, like I said, it summarizes our five number summary. So we've got our max, Q3, median, Q1, and minimum. So all five of those five number summary um, represented using a box for the middle 50%, our IQR, right? So we can even see from here to here, this is going to be our IQR, our inner quartile range, that middle 50% of our data. Um, and it allows us to then put, say, in this particular example, we're looking at earnings versus the two groups having a high school diploma as your highest education versus having a bachelor's degree. And then you can kind of see, just glancing at this, what's the difference in these two groups? We can see the box for high school is a little lower than the box for bachelor's. So that middle 50% um, having a bachelor's degree are earning more than those of the high school degree. We can also compare the medians. Just look at the centers of these two distributions. Looks like uh, the median for the people with a bachelor's is around 39 and for a high school is around 22. Now, I just stole this box plot forever ago off the internet, so I have absolutely no knowledge if this is <laughs> correct or not. Um, and you can also look at the maximums and sort of compare those. So there's a lot we can see. We can see there's a lot more variability in the bachelor's degrees, a larger range overall, though our IQRs are fairly similar for the two. Now we're going to go ahead and make these ourselves. When we make these ourselves, we're going to make what's called a modified box plot. So you can see down here our modified box plot. So we're going to do this by figuring out if something is an outlier. So this is our first real criteria for looking at and actually quantifying is something an outlier. Whereas previously we just looked at it and said, eh, it's far away from the majority of the rest of the data. It seems unusual. It's probably an outlier. We actually have a way to quantify. Um, so this is something that you're going to want to memorize or, and or put on your note card for the first exam. These are the fence formulas for um, checking for outliers when we're making our modified box plot. So they make sense. We're going to start either with our quartile Q1 or Q3, and then we're going to go 1.5 IQRs above or below that. So to visually see what this would look like in this previous example, we can see our IQR. It's from here to here, right? That's the length of it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of those and stack it on top. It's a little bit short. And then a half. So one and a half. So one and a half IQRs on top of Q3 and one and a half IQRs um, below Q1. And then that's where your, all your data should fall. So we can actually see in this previous example it appears that this maximum value is actually an outlier. It is far away from that middle 50%, far away enough um, that it would be considered an outlier by this criterion. I, I mean, my drawing is not very good in terms of scale, but even if I had done a better job of measuring this out, maybe going there and then half again, we're still not going to be um, to that maximum. So that would be an outlier if this was a modified box plot. So we'll go ahead and work this through and see what it looks like. Um, there are two, quant two different levels of outliers, mild and extreme, based on certain software and certain books. We are only going to be dealing with the mild outliers. So we don't need to do anything other than this 1.5 IQR criterion. When you look through some of my old answer keys and old work, um, there may be both. And that's just because that's how we used to do it at SDSU when I, I worked there. So you can ignore that and just only use the 1.5 criterion. So here's our first example. This is the one I'll work through and then I'll stop this video and let you guys uh, have kind of a break from it. So first thing we need to do, we have case prices of wine produced in a vineyard in Napa. We need our five number summary. And this, by the way, is a huge star next to this. This is the warm and fuzzy question, I'll even write it at the top, on the exam. And that means this is going to be page one, question one of your exam guaranteed. This is what we're going to work on on the worksheet tomorrow, uh, and there are a ton of these in your homework packet too. So 
you guys should be more than prepared to knock this question out of the park and get those 14 points on the exam. So if I need to make my five number summary, I could either do it by hand or since I have a sweet calculator, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go into stat, edit. I want to clear out this L1. So you should all have stuff in L1 if you were playing around with me um, previously. So I'm going to go up to L1, highlight it, and press the clear button. And then press enter. And now I can enter the data. It does not need to be in order. My calculator will sort it when it's figuring out the median and do all that good stuff. There's even a sort button if you wanted the calculator to do the sorting for you. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while I enter the rest of these. You don't have to watch that. So when you finish, you can see you have a little index here telling you what space you're on. So right now I'm on the 14th space. So I can just double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 13 things, and I entered 13 values. So at the very least, I feel pretty good that I've entered the right number of values. Um, and then I can go ahead and go to Stat, over to Calculate, 1 bar Stats. And that'll give me my mean, standard deviation, right? We have our mean, our standard deviation. And then if I scroll all the way down, I get my whole five number summary. So I'm going to pause you guys while I write this down on my paper. Now that we have our five number summary down, uh, the next step is to find our IQR, because that's what we need to add or subtract from our Q1 and Q3 uh, to be able to figure out whether or not we have outliers. Uh, this will not be points on the exam. In fact, I usually skip this step. But our IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Our maximum of that middle 50 and the minimum of that middle 50. So this is 140 minus 124.5, which is 15.5, I believe. I'll double check because I don't trust myself. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to check out those fences. The fences, again, these are the formulas you should write down on a note card for the first exam. The lower fence is going to start at our lower quartile, Q1. The upper fence is going to start at our upper quartile, Q3. The lower fence, we need to go below that. So we'll do minus, and then our criterion is 1.5 times the IQR. And the upper, we're going to go above it, and again, 1.5 times our IQR. So that's what we're going to be plugging into. So Q1, 124.5, minus 1.5 times that 15.5 that we got for our IQR. And then we have our 140 plus 1.5 times 15.5. So on the test, this is usually a three-point question. One point for getting this value correct, one point for getting this value correct, and then one point for actually answering whether or not there are any outliers. Because on the test, this is, are there any outliers? And students will forget to even answer that question. So figure out what these two values are. Type it in my calculator. Got a 101.25. And we'll do 140 plus. Takes us 163.25. Don't mind me, I'm just going to go poop. I'm going to murder my husband. Um, and we continue on. So these two fences, we're then going to say all of the values should be within those fences, right? That's what we're hoping to see in that box plot is that everything falls inside. And so one thing you can do um, is you can actually look at your data set. This is why I took time when we were paused at one point and wrote out the whole data set. And you can actually draw these fences physically on your data. So 101 would be somewhere right around there, right, between 90 and 122. And 163 is somewhere north of 150. So in theory, all of our good data is going to fall inside those fences. Anything outside those fences, well, that's an outlier. It's a bad sheep. I like to call them sheeps, and I like to draw sheeps. So now we have our two bad sheep, our two outliers. So the end result of this is 67 and 90 are outliers because they are beyond our fences. So nothing should be below the lower fence and nothing should be above the upper fence. Once we're done with this, we can finally draw our first box plot. So there's an, an order I like to go by. There's no reason to do this, but I like to start with the box then do my outliers, and then do my whiskers. So we'll, we'll go through in that order. So the first thing we want to do is the box itself. 
The box, remember, is the middle half of our data. So we're just going to do Q1, median, and Q3. So Q1 is at 124.5. I will always ask you to label these. So part of that labeling, I like to put in what that value is, because sometimes students get off on that number line, and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not going to dock you points, uh, that you, I know where you were trying to put that, and, and also say what it is. Uh, our median is at 129. And our Q3 is at 140. Okay. So next step, we're done with our box now, is to do the outliers. We said 67 and 90 were outliers. So we're going to mark both of those about midway through the box, right? I'm not trying to do dots. I'm just trying to keep myself midway. We're going to do a, an open circle at 67 and at 90. So these are our two outliers. 67 is still our minimum value, even though it's an outlier. It's still the true minimum. All right, and then the next thing we want to do is we finish our whiskers. Our, our outliers is do our whiskers. So the right side whisker is easy. We're going to go to 150, our maximum value. The left side whisker is where everybody makes mistakes on the exam. I see a lot of this, which is not correct. I also see a whole lot of this where we're going to the fence. Uh, that's also incorrect. Where we want to go when we do this is we want to go to the next good sheep, the next good value. So if we look back at our data set, this 122 is the smallest good value. So that's what we're going to go to here. This is actually called the adjacent value. It doesn't get any cool name up at the top, um, but that's where your left whisker is going to go to to that 122. So that's how to make a modified box plot, and I'll make a second video working through the next exercise.